Magic is power. It has the capacity to create and destroy, manipulate and transform. It can shatter the very laws that govern each world. The infinite planes of the multiverse are home to countless mages. Yet for all their mastery over their craft, they are each bound to their own planes of reality, blind to the true vastness of the multiverse. But some mages are born with a potential for more. The spark, this gift realized only upon facing a great ordeal, once ignited, it allows the mage to travel between planes and draw from each plane's magic to reach heights of power otherwise impossible to achieve. They can begin their journey as a planeswalker. Hello, I'm Rhythian. And this is Magic Duels, Shadows over Innistrad. Shadows over Innistrad is the latest expansion for Magic the Gathering. One of, if not the, biggest collectible trading card game out there. Which has also had a number of video games based on it. Um, particularly the Duels of the Planeswalker series that I've been playing a fair bit. The latest version, so to speak, of those is Magic Duels, which I think originally came out under the name Magic Duels colon Origins, because Origins was the main campaign and the main set that was coming out in Magic at the time. Uh, this is a free-to-play version where you, instead of uh, buying and building decks more rigidly and controlled, as it was back in the Duels of the Planeswalker games, now had more of a more creative freedom to make your own decks properly with the cards offered for you. Now, the best part of Magic Duels right now is that you get quite a bit of the game for free. So, for those of you who are really into Hearthstone, and maybe want to take a look at Magic, the original game, then let's check it here. So, immediately, you are faced with a campaign. And you have five side missions, or missions, I guess, in the Shadows of Innistrad campaign. Let's start with the first one, and uh, it's not as flashy as Hearthstone when it comes to voice acting and all effects and stuff, but you get some nice art and some basic story. So we're taking on the role of Jace, Bellerin, and we're trying to find Liliana Vess, and sadly, we run into a bunch of werewolves. For magic, you start with seven cards, or you can mulligan down to less, and you also have cards called land cards. Again, if you've played magic before, a lot of this will be very basic for you, and maybe it'll be a bit annoying. But if you haven't played magic before, and most of your experience with trading card games, or collectible card games, or digital card games, or whatever you want to call them, comes from Hearthstone, you're going to see some differences. For example, these land cards that we're putting out, that's basically our mana. Instead of getting a mana crystal each turn, like in Hearthstone, we have to specifically play land cards every turn. Now, for Shadows of Innistrad, we go back to the Innistrad world. The Innistrad world, uh, or Innistrad plane, I suppose we can call it, is a, a gothic horror realm, so you have a lot of transformation. You have people turning into werewolves, people turning into vampires, that sort of thing. So because of that, they have a mechanic on these cards called the transform mechanic. Each card sort of has a trigger, that makes it so that if X thing happens, it will transform. You flip the card over, and it is now a different card on the other hand, uh, on the other side. So as you can see, I have Thing in the Ice, which has X amount of ice counters that get removed from casting spells. So right now, it's just a Thing in the Ice. And I am about to die, because they have he has 12 damage on me, and I am pretty screwed. So what I'm going to have to do is block with one of these. They can take one of them. So that'll be down to 9, and then I cast a spell to get rid of one of the other ones. Now, first of all, this gets rid of um, 6 of the 12 damage, so that I only take 6 damage and just about survive. Down to 1 HP, as you can see. Um, but more importantly, this 
uh, means I have only one ice counter left on my thing in the ice. Which survives because it has 4 HP. As he begins spamming out more of his unruly rubs. This, by the way, is a skill quest, which is basically short gameplay examples that teach you how a mechanic works. It's a pretty smart way of getting it sorted. Anyway, we get another spell. Or sorcery. Like, there are different types of spells. There are sorcerers in instance and whatever. Removes my last ass counter. Makes my thing in the ice flip. My thing in the ice is now a kick-ass kraken. Um, and the kraken has 7 damage and 8 defense. As you can see, you can check both sides of the card, because it's a double face card. And now my awoken, awakened horror kraken thingamajinger. I think it's not even a kraken, it's just a horror. But I call it a kraken. I don't know why I called it a kraken. I guess it was a tentacled monster thing. Anyway, 7 damage is enough to kill him, and hooray, I have finished the skill quest. That's how transform cards work, and this is how skill quests work in the game. When there's a new mechanic that shows up for a different set or different type of cards, um, you immediately get something to test it out. It's pretty smart, if very, very handholdy. Anyway, back to this current mission. So this guy has the village ironsmith, and the trigger for that to flip is if there are no spells cast the next turn. Now in magic, spell pretty much everything is a spell. Uh, everything except like calling on land is a spell. If I pull out a, a new card, that's like a spell summon. So me putting the, the fog bank, you see there, the flying little thing on my on my board, that is a spell. So a spell has been cast a turn, so therefore his ironsmith can't flip over and become a werewolf. It's hard to know how to explain this. I don't want to go overload into mechanics because that's not really going to help you like understand anything. And if you already know it, it's not going to help you anymore. So I guess I'm not going to just go overboard about all the mechanics and just instead sort of talk of the game a little bit as we play. Um, my main reason for playing this game today is because there's been a Hearthstone is so big. And I've been playing a bit of Hearthstone recently, very little. Like I, you guys wonder why there hasn't like been any Tavern Brawl videos for me and so recently, because none of us have played Hearthstone since like before Christmas, at like at all. So I just I just haven't even done them. I haven't even played, you know, getting my weekly deck or anything. It's just been kind of bored. And then Shadows over Innistrad came out for for Magic. Now I used to play Magic uh, a fair bit, uh, mostly online, but also with real cards and stuff. And my girlfriend is a huge Magic fan, so um, we've been talking a lot about it. And then the, um, the Innistrad plane, like this, the original Innistrad came out a couple of years ago, and that was when I really got into Magic first. Um, I love Soren. Avison, I love the I love the theme of Innistrad and so on. It's really cool. So now that the current Magic set, I guess the current expansion, whatever you want to call it, is Innistrad again, it's it's really really getting me hyped and makes me want to get back into Magic. Um, it especially helps because the set before Innistrad was Battle for Zendikar, and uh, Zendikar was also another uh, plane and realm. I thought really cool because I love the Eldrazi. These like ancient eldritch horrors of the void that uses colorless mana, which is badass. In Magic, there are five colors: uh, blue, red, green, black, white, and they all sort of they they all have um, spheres of influence and and different styles and so on. When we play uh, Jace, the character we're playing in this little campaign is a blue mage, so we're using a lot of blue mana and blue mana spells and stuff. Um, Gameplay wise, uh, blue is usually a lot of like fuck with the enemy, more or less. Um, you get to control his characters, um, uh, you, you could tap them to stop them from moving, you can disperse them, you can counter his spells, you can stop them, etc. etc. Uh, for instance, on the screen right now, I'm sort of taking a look at his character and decide what to do um, claustrophobic on, or claustrophobia, and I cast that on one of his guys who can turn into big-ass werewolves. So that taps the card, which means he can't attack with it, and it also puts a cannot-untap thing on it. As long as that card, that enchantment, is on the card, it's basically unusable for him. He cannot use it to block, he cannot use it to attack, and it's just it's just basically dead weight as long as the field. That's sort of part of what blue does in magic. Um, 
On the opposite side, the werewolves are a combination of red and green, which is kind of makes sense actually a lot because uh, red is like the very aggressive, very like aggro, very very haste charge type thing, like a little bit like a warrior thing maybe. I guess uh, let's let's skip the analogies because they don't really work. And green is more nature and stuff, so so they work they work for the werewolf deck, which I guess he's sort of running right now. Um, my favorite colors, by the way, is white. What's my favorite color in, in magic, by the way? Um, now where was I? Right, so, so, yeah, so I've, I've been wanting to get back into magic a little bit, and, and then Magic Duels, I remembered I had this downloaded from back when it was first released, and getting to sort of explore, see the new cards, uh, play with the story a little bit, and do the, and it's all for free, um, it's really nice, actually. I quite like it. Um, the actual campaigns feel also a, a little bit like the solo adventures in Hearthstone. Like, nowhere near as, you know, immersive and and big and involved as those. They're, they're just way bigger and, like, gives you more and does more stuff and all that sort of things. But it is pretty cool. You sort of follow a storyline, You but you, you, you do have these, like, pre-made decks... Uh, albeit with a fair bit of randomization, obviously. As always, you probably have the same deck, but obviously the order in which the cards show up and which ones you start with are, are randomized. Um, yeah. it's It's been pretty fun, and I, I like doing it. And it can get quite tricky as well. Like some of, some of the missions, I guess you want to call them, on their opponents are pretty hard. Um... Right now, I'm sort of looking through cards to use here. I don't usually play blue. Blue is actually my least favorite color, uh, both to play against and, and to play. So it's a little bit interesting to step into to this, tool, this side when we play. Now, I think he is about to flip his cards. He had always already flipped his cards. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Um, which you can see now, because his cards are flipped, they are way stronger. Um, and I have to start dealing with them in the same way. Luckily, like, I have been able to deal with them pretty well. Um, I've used the Claustrophobia to shut down some of them. Um, I am holding, uh, Jace's thing in my hand, which basically reduces their attack whenever I use it. Uh, I'm keeping mana saved. Because one of the things in Magic that's different to Hearthstone is that you can cast spells, instant spells and stuff, um, on on their turn. So they're gonna attack with something and you can cast a spell with mana you've saved up um, to do something with this card as he's trying to do that. So he's about to attack with this dude and you save mana and say like, aha, stop, I'm lowering the attack value on your thing so you won't hit as hard, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's interesting, the this, this system of blocking and stuff is interesting as well. Um, most every card can block um, uh, you can't attack their cards, you always attack against them, and they get to decide if they block or not. It's... It's a... It's a different system from Hearthstone in a lot of ways. Better in some, worse in some, I suppose. Hearthstone is definitely more straightforward, and uh, unarguably very, very popular. But there's so much to, um, magic. There's so many really, really interesting mechanics that... This is one of the main things I miss. When I when I play Hearthstone, there are so many interesting mechanics. Anyway, um, the Iron Fang had to switch back over because I cast two spells in my turn. So the way the werewolves, uh, pretty much all the cards he's playing, all the werewolf cards he's playing, like if no spells have been cast previous turn, they flip over and become the werewolves. But if I have cast two spells or more, they flip back and become their human forms. Um, they are weaker in their human forms, so. Um, if things are looking bad, I want to make sure to cast a lot of spells. They go back to them because they are weaker. They have less, less attack and less defense. Um, luckily, most of my damage in this fight has come from my flyer, and flying units cannot be blocked by non-flying units or units that don't have reach. And on top of that, I've been able to throw out cl three claustrophobia spells on his big hitters, so they're just not unusable. It's taken some time, but through control, which is uh, blue, co the blue color's strength, I've pretty much been able to stop him from doing whatever he wants. Particularly also because these fog banks um, have the ability to block all damage taken. Like, they are defenders, so they can't attack, and they have 0-2 either way. But, um, 
on their card it says prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and by a fog bank. So they do no damage and they take no damage. They're pretty much the perfect defenders because they fly as well. Of course, they can still be like uh, enchanted away or, or exiled or you know, that sort of thing, but they work really well for, for defenders. It's one of the best defending cards in the, in, in the entire game. And I haven't even gone into the stuff about like tokens and sacrificing to get cards. Magic is so huge and they the only way to sort of get a handle on it really is to follow the current standard rules. Um, which is a system the Hearthstone recently started using, having the whole standard versus not standard. Um, either way, um, I'm pretty happy with winning this one. Let's move on. Jace reaches Liliana, have a short conversation on top of some gorgeous art. Uh, Liliana is a badass necromancer lady. She's cool. And Jace basically gets the tip to keep moving on to Markov Manor, where he'll find Soren Markov. My favorite planeswalker. He is awesome. He is a white-black vampire. He's great. Now, uh, there's more than just story mode in this game. Uh, like, the real core of the game lies in the battle mode things. First of all, you have more than one storyline. When this came out, you just had Origins, and then you have, like, five short campaigns, all focused around different characters, five different planeswalkers, telling, appropriately, their origin story. Um, there's also the aforementioned Sendikar campaigns I mentioned, um, which I haven't done yet, actually. I don't know. Pretty hyped about doing that, but I just came back to it recently. I've been been looking for more Shadows of Innistrad stuff. Oath of the Gage Watch is basically the follow-up to Sendikar. It's like a two-parter storyline. Um, based around how magic releases its its cards in the real world as well. Now, um, you can of course go in and make your own decks here, which you pretty much have to do, or should do, when you're building your your cards for like online mode, and playing against other people, or even playing against the AI. Go to the deck builder, you, you basically just make your cards, like you, you have your entire collection of cards you played. This is, this is pretty straightforward, what you can do, um, but the helpful thing is that you, you get a lot of cards to play with. Uh, you can design them however you want, and you have filters for finding particular ones, like I want a black artifact. This is the, actually there's probably not going to be a black artifact, is there? Well, no, there wasn't. Um, but if I want to find something colorless, I just click the colorless mana symbol, which is new for Sendikar, by the way. And I only really have a land because I haven't done unlocked much or bought many boosters. Um, I should go into details about that, maybe I guess. But as you play, you get gold. You can see I have about 1,900 up there, and then you, with the gold, you buy boosters, which boosters has um, cards in it, and then you build your your deck based on that. And you can also get help with like a, a deck wizard and archetype builder and so on. It's pretty straightforward, and it's actually surprisingly fair with, with how how the bunny works, it works out. It's I did not expect Magic, which is a really, really expensive game, at least in, in real life, to to have a fairly fair um you know card buying system in in the online version, but it does, and I'm pretty happy about that. Um, all in all, I'd say if magic interests you, if you think it always looked like it could be pretty cool, but it seemed like very, you know, too complex and deep to just jump into immediately and start from scratch, then, you know, this is a pretty good thing, to, pretty good place to start. You can just keep, keep going and, and uh, do the story if you want to. Uh, start slow, uh, earn a bit of gold from doing things, and and buy your booster decks and play against the AI, take it easy, and then if you want to, you can go online and actually play against other people. There's a 2v2 mode you can play, which is pretty cool. I mean, Hearthstone doesn't have that, so there's something. I should say, by the way, I'm not here to, like, complain about Hearthstone. That's really not the intention. I actually think Hearthstone is really cool, particularly the single-player part of it. But I'd like to make people aware that there are alternatives. And I think Magic Duels is a pretty cool alternative. Alright, well, thank you for watching. And um, 
I hope you have fun playing whatever it is you want to play, but maybe give this a go, it's free to play. Or not. Stick, stick with Hearthstone, that's free to play too. It's pretty cool. Actually, I'll tell you what I really want, I, what I'm really wanting is um, a new single player adventure for Hearthstone. League of Explorers is pretty fun. Next up is the Whisper of Zolg, I think, but that's just cards, you know? Like, uh, Goblins vs. Gnomes and, and, and the Grand Tournaments, so just a bunch of cards. That's not as interesting to me. I know people who are more into Hearthstone will be all about the new standard mode and figuring out everything and stuff, but I, I want more single player adventures, that's what I'm after. So until that comes out, this is a, a, a nice little thing in the in between for scratching that adventure mode itch, plus I really like Innistrad, man. Innistrad is pretty damn cool. Alright, that's enough card game rambling from me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, goodbye.